啊，大家好，我是林毅。现在呢，我在上海的一家酒店里。上午呢，我刚刚和苹果全球副总裁 Bob b o u c h e r s 交流了一下。这次呢，聊的还挺深入的。目前风口浪尖的这个8 GB 内存的 M3 MacBook Pro， 包括 M3 Pro 的配置问题呢，我都直接开诚布公的问了。当然呢，我也聊了聊我最感兴趣的苹果的 AI 生态问题。行，那就不废话了，直接放这次交流的正题。Um, so, uh, good morning, Bob. Uh, I'm a machine learning engineer uh, as well as a content creator. So I make some toy projects of reinforcement、mm-hmm. learning, and uh, uh, some of the projects are based on computer vision.、Mm-hmm. And I make those projects into videos. And sometimes I make videos on、um, consumer product reviews,、mm-hmm. and that leads to our discussion today. Yeah, very、um, good. So.、Um, As a machine learning developer, the unified memory on Apple Silicon is like a beautiful breeze, as、mm. well as those、uh, neural engines. So,、um, especially those large memory configurations. Yeah.、Uh, so with chips like M2 Ultra, and I, I'm actually using a Mac Studio with M2 Ultra. Oh wow!、Uh, with, nice. With 128 gig of memory,、yep. and I could just play whatever large large language models I like. Yeah. And That device just stays quiet as a charm.、Mm. Yeah, and I really like that. Yeah, good. So the first question is like,、uh, so the community likes this unified memory architecture too.、Mm-hmm. Like there is many open source projects working on maybe running、uh, large language models natively、mm-hmm. on Apple Silicon's.、Mm-hmm. Are you aware of this、uh, emerging AI community around Apple Silicon? Absolutely, we think that Apple Silicon is perfect for many AI kind of ML、uh, tasks and, and capabilities. And in fact, something I think people sometimes forget is that we've built in AI and ML into Apple Silicon for many, many years. And in fact, from、uh, for Apple Silicon for the Mac. It's been there since day one,、mm-hmm. and we just, as you point out, continue to build on those capabilities, so that you, as somebody who's expert in the field, can go and extend and work at kind of the the far edges of what what's possible.、Mm-hmm. And for us to be able to take the M2 Ultra capabilities and the unified memory configuration and actually extend them and bring them now into the MacBook Pro, which you can take with you anywhere. We think is going to unlock all sorts of new capabilities and possibilities. So we're very much aware of, and we're encouraged by, and we love what's happening、uh, in the field.、Um, and we really embrace this idea that,、um, for example, as you're describing yourself, you're not just a coder, you're not just a、uh, modeler, you're a content creator. You do, you run a business, you do all these things, and Mac is designed for people like、yes. you. It's not just one thing. It's we want Mac to be your kind of powerhouse across your entire work and in, across your entire life, and that means taking away limitations that maybe you thought existed last year, but now this year we can do so much more. So we're very excited by the work that people like you do,、um, and we're inspired by it. That's why we do what we do is to give you the capabilities to let your imagination run free. Yes, exactly. I I want to add to add on to that. Like I'm making machine learning projects and I'm using Final Cut to do my editing. And、uh, yeah, that's like a a great workflow. I I can just、uh, use this one platform to do everything.、Uh, regarding this artificial intelligence, I have this follow up question. So、mm-hmm. uh, just like you said, Apple has been、uh, doing. Uh, machine learning features all along, and there are many machine learning feature on Apple products like Apple Watch, for example. We have this hand gesture is、mm-hmm. definitely related to the machine learning, and I just noticed this、uh, weird scenario. Like Apple seems to seldom use this terminology artificial intelligence.、Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Apple use machine learning instead. And I'm just curious about this. Why is that?、It's、like many other companies, they love this terminology. They love this concept for marketing and artificial、mm-hmm. intelligence is all around the place.、Mm-hmm. So why is Apple kind of deliberately avoiding this term? I wouldn't say that we're deliberately avoiding it. In fact, we talk about the Apple Neural Engine、oh, yes. often and kind of describe the capabilities there. But at Apple, we are always focused on the end result, 
not the technology that's kind of way behind it. We would rather emphasize the things that you do and what、mm-hmm. you can do with artificial intelligence and machine learning, as opposed to you know talking about it in in general. And as you point out, you know, double tap on the、um, on Apple Watch. Personal voice on iPhone,、um, and then obviously many of the things that we've just released with M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max are really designed to be able to enable great experiences. And we want to focus on the experiences as opposed to the technology itself, because saying that you can do AI and ML is great, but it's not nearly as important as the things that you can do with it. And that's way we've always been focused at, at at Apple. Let's focus on the end result and what's great in our consumers and our you know professionals' lives, as opposed to the technology behind it. Cool. Do some real stuff. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Just showcase how that comes to life, as opposed to the ingredients、uh, behind it. So、uh, we we don't avoid AI and ML as as terms, but we very much focus on the the end result. So I've been following along the discussion about the new MacBook Pros、yeah. and、uh, on social media,、mm-hmm. and I'm I, I just find this one major concern, and that's related to the base model of、uh, yeah. MacBook Pro. So the the problem is about the RAM, and people are saying that the 14 inch base model coming with eight gigabytes of RAM,、mm-hmm. that's not、uh, meant for a Pro use case.、Mm. What's your thought on this discussion of the of this eight gigabyte? Yeah, I'm I'm glad you're I'm glad you're asking, and I'm glad that you've actually already brought up unified memory in the conversation.、Mm-hmm. Comparing our memory to other systems' memory actually isn't equivalent、uh, because of the fact that we have、uh, such an efficient use of memory,、um, and we use memory compression, and we have a unified memory architecture. Actually, eight gigabytes. On an M3、uh, MacBook Pro、mm. is probably analogous to 16 gigabytes on other systems. We just happen to be able to use it much more efficiently.、Um, and so, what I would say is, I would have people get you know come in and、uh, try what they want to do on their systems,、um, and they will I think will see incredible performance. I mean, if you look at the raw、uh, data and if you look at the raw capabilities of these systems, it really is it really is phenomenal. And this is a place where I think、uh, people need to see beyond the specs and actually go and look at the capabilities、mm-hmm. and and listen to trusted people like you who actually have used the systems、um, and can be able to say, you know, this is not about is it should it be eight or some other number, but really look at the capabilities and how efficiently we take advantage of that memory.、Um, and I think you'll find that an M3 system. Uh, is is incredibly capable and will be you know for aspiring pros or you know many other people will be a great system for them to be able to use, and obviously you know coming out at a new lower price too it becomes even more accessible to have that XDR display to have the amazing camera and audio systems to have the connectivity to have MagSafe all of that in that one system with that much performance I'm so proud of that it really is a phenomenal system.、Mm-hmm. Just like when we were talking about artificial intelligence, and、uh, you just mentioned, see the end result. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I'll, 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 I'll definitely do some. Maybe get my hands on one of those entry level model and、uh, do some real time field test on those devices. Yeah, please, please do. It's one of those things where I think people need to look beyond the specifications、mm-hmm. and actually go and understand how that technology is being used.、Mm-hmm. That's that's the true the true test. 实际上，这次我还问了很多问题，包括高通和英特尔在这次交流里呢，也都涉及了。关于 Mac 产品线，我也问了不少其他的问题，有的呢还挺尖锐的，比如像 M3 Pro。这次呢，整个交流是半个多小时，但今天呢，我赶着蹭这个 MacBook Pro 首发的这个热度，所以呢，先捡一部分发上来。那说到首发，这次我首发拿到的 MacBook Pro 呢是深空黑色的版本，这个颜色呢，实际上手质感是真的挺不错的。它这个黑色呢，是和 iPhone 一样，用阳极氧化工艺直接打到金属上的，所以颜色呢比任何的黑色贴膜都要纯正和均匀，而且还很抗指纹，只要手不是特别脏的话，都不会轻易的留印可以说是黑色爱好者狂喜。然后深空黑版本的这个充电线呢，也做成了黑色，但它的这个充电器呢，却又是白色的
。所以说呢，如果要是呃强迫症的朋友，不知道能不能受得了。然后具体的产品性能呢？首先 ，M3 Max 是没什么争议的，继续突破移动芯片的性能上限。我第一时间拿 M3 Max 简单 Geekbench 跑了个分我这个配置呢是14个 CPU 核心， 3 0个 GPU 核心， 9 6 G 统一内存，它是3 0 0 G 每秒内存带宽的次顶配，还不是16核 CPU、4 0核 GPU、4 0 0 G 每秒内存带宽的最顶配，而且呢是14寸。但是它的跑分呢也已经达到了单核3 0 0 0多核 19,400 的一个成绩，也就是 M2 Ultra 这个级别。的水平，再加上今年呢，还新推出了一个 GPU 的动态缓存技术。专业的朋友呢，应该都知道这是一个什么级别的东西。它是从系统底层优化了 GPU 显存的使用，像游戏啊、三 D 渲染，甚至是 AI 计算这类 GPU 处理任务呢，都会原地获得一个效率上的提升。再然后呢，就是支持硬件加速的光线追踪和网格着色也来到了 MacBook 移动平台上。说 M3 Max 还在继续突破移动超高续航笔记本的可能性呢，这是没什么争议的。至于说 M3 Pro 和入门级的 M3 呢，这次我也已经拿了一台 8G 内存。目前可以说是集舆论场万千宠爱于一身的 MacBook Pro， 准备呢回去好好看一看。这次交流的过程中呢 ，Bob 对这个配置是很有信心的。当然呢，他是苹果副总裁，他是强力意向官方。不过他的观点总结下来还是落在了用产品说话上。这个观点本身呢，我还是比较认可的。虽然目前直接迎合情绪，把这个 8G 内存批判一番，可以获得最大的流量，但回归技术本身，我认为呢，苹果的统一内存架构对内存效率的优化，还有 MacOS 内存。压缩技术的积极作用呢，也不应该就一边倒的被彻底忽视掉。就这个东西呢，其实也没什么好争的，行就行，不行就是不行。产品到手一测呢，就都知道了。这个是数码博主这个时候最应该做的。这两天呢，我也会进行一些更深度的测试，尽快形成一个结论出来。然后这次和 Bob b o s h e r s 的整个交流过程呢，后面我也会把字幕配好发上来，就冲着目前苹果、高通、英特尔产品发布的密集程度，有讨论、有争议，这都是好事这整个围绕着高性能移动芯片的竞争呢，可以说就是苹果的 M1 一手带起来的。现在可以说好戏才终于正式拉开帷幕，我也会持续关注。行，我是林毅，今天呢就先到这，咱们还是下个视频见。没关系，我愿安安静静地坐在马路旁。夏天也好，冬天也好，总是会有人在歌唱。<音乐>